So the next presentation will be by also a very active technical committee on alkali aggregate reactions. We have had in RILAM already quite some committees on this topic. Um, and uh, I'm happy to say that also two new committees will soon start. So the committee 258 AAA was especially focusing on avoiding alkali aggregate reactions in concrete, a performance-based concept. So uh, Borge Wigum will now present the activities and achievements of the technical committee. And normally by clicking this link, his presentation should start. Welcome to this uh, presentation today uh, about RILEM Technical Committee, TC258, AAA, uh, about avoiding alkali aggregate reactions in concrete, performance-based concept. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Birke Johannes Wigum. I will talk about the activities and achievement of this committee uh, for the past five years. Uh, I am appointed at Heidelberg Cement Northern Europe and uh, until recently I was an adjunct professor at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Starting with uh, the mechanisms behind alkali aggregate reactions. In order for the reaction to occur, you need to have three components. You have to have reactive aggregates, you have to have sufficient water in the concrete or high moisture content, and you have to have a certain degree of or amount of alkalis. If you're taking away one of these components, the reactive aggregates, uh, nothing will happen. Um, if you're taking away or lowering the water content, like in indoor concrete, you will not have this reaction. And if you have the alkalis below a certain level, then the reaction will not occur either. The alkalis will be supplied from the cement, but could also come from external sources and even from the aggregates itself that we will come back to. And in addition, temperature will uh, increase temperature will also accelerate the reaction. So what is happening is that um, SU2 minerals in, in the aggregates, in the concrete, in the high uh, pH uh, environment, in the cement paste, those minerals will start to dissolve and it will be produced the alkali silica gel. And this alkali silica gel it is a very thirsty, it's absorbing water a lot. Uh, we do know about this alkali silica gel uh, when you're buying a, a camera or whatever and they are in there to absorb humidity. And that's exactly what's happening in concrete. This alkali silica gel is absorbing moisture and by absorbing it's expanding and the expansion forces is strong enough for the whole concrete body to expand. So you could have some, some uh, expansion of the concrete body, you could have some map cracking and all this uh, expansion and cracks will of course be bad for the, this concrete structure and could also introduce some secondary damage like frost thaw damage, uh, reinforcement, corrosion and so on. It was Thomas Stanton back in 1940s in the California that realized these mechanisms. Um, and he actually did a great job and he started to introduce test methods. He introduced a motor bar test that later came as ASTM 227. Um, also different other countries started to develop uh, different test methods. And back in 1986, Oberholster and Davids in South Africa, they developed the South African accelerator motor bar test as later on has been known as the accelerator motor bar test. So it was developed many different test methods in different countries. So it was in a way difficult to compare the different results from the different test methods and so on. So then it was obvious a need for a holistic approach on a global scale. Uh, and with that respect, RILEM was the right organization to start to look at these um, challenges of alkali aggregated reactivity around the world uh, on, a, on a more global scale. So 
So back in 1988, the first technical committee of RILEM, uh, TC106, was established. Um, and that uh, TC mainly worked with accelerated aggregate tests and so on. And then the next uh, TC started in 2001 to 2006, looked into diagnosis and appraisal and specification. And then the third TC from 2006 and to 2014 uh, looked more into performance testing and modeling. And all these uh, three TCs uh, were chaired by Dr. Philip Nixon from uh, England and uh, the deputy chair, um, Dr. Ian Sims from England as well. So they did a tremendous uh, good work during these 25 years of service. Um, and as a main outcome uh, of test methods in this work, it is a three-step testing procedure in Rylan. So we have the petrographic method uh, using the microscope to look at reactive aggregates and so on. That's the AAR1 method. Then we have the second step is accelerated motor bar test, uh, putting uh, motor bars into 80 degrees and one uh, normal sodium hydroxide solution. You got quite quick uh, results um, of that test. So that's the second one. And then thirdly, you have the concrete prism tests. We have two versions, the AAR3, with where the exposure is at 38 degrees, and AAR41, where the exposure are at 60 degrees. And uh, the concrete prisms are stored at 100% um, uh, relative humidity. So um, the publications or deliverables from these three theses by Nixon and Sims. Uh, first, we had the uh, publication by Springer in 2013 on the guide to diagnosis and appraisal of AR damage to concrete structures. And then um, after the uh, third TC, we had these recommendations uh, published in 2016, Rylem recommendations for the prevention of damage by AR reaction in new concrete structures. And also additionally, we had a very comprehensive petrographic atlas uh, with many, many examples of thin section micrographs of reactive uh, rock aggregates around the world. Uh, so after the third TC, it was realized that we needed to continue this work and um, a new application for a fourth TC, the TC258 AAA, uh, was started in 2014. Uh, and that is the um, uh, main uh, content of my presentation today to present what we have uh, and what we have done. Uh, and the purpose of this technical committee is to develop and promote a performance-based testing concept for the prevention of deleterious AAR in concrete. And we also stated that there will be strong emphasis will be put on the implementation of the Rylan methods and recommendations as national and international standards. Um, so the, the committee established in 2014, um, I had the honor to be the chairman of that committee and uh, Dr. Jan Lingo from Sintef in Norway uh, was the deputy chairman of the secretary of the committee. Uh, we divided the uh, work in this TC into four different work packages. So uh, the first one looking into per uh, performance testing and accelerated testing in laboratory. Uh, the second one about performance testing and, la and labor laboratory results versus field uh, from exposure sites. Uh, the third one, looking into the assessment of detailed alkali inventory in concrete, and eventually a fourth one, looking into the verification of performance testing. Um, I will go through uh, th those work packages a little bit in more in detail now. So the first one uh, was led by Dr. Terje Rönning from Heidelberg Cement Northern Europe. Uh, and it was looking into the performance testing and accelerated testing and laboratory. Um, so um, first we had a RILEM AR Nort document. Uh, that is a document that uh, already were published in the previous TC, 
uh, but we re revised that document, which is an outline guide to the use of Rhinelander methods. In addition, um, uh, we developed a new um, concrete prism test called AAR10 uh, at 38 degrees, and we have two new uh, concrete prism tests, AAR11 and 12, uh, where the exposure are at uh, 60 degrees. And finally, we developed Rylem AR13 uh, based on a Japanese test approach where the, the concrete prisms are wrapped with an alkalized solution to, to um, counteract against leaching. Um, one of the reasons we um, come up with Rylem AR10 uh, was that we saw the need to increase the prism size. In a, in a Norwegian um, uh, research project uh, and a PhD work by Jan Lindgård uh, back in 2013, it was realized that if the prisons in this, uh, was in this size, um, it was a problem that uh, we got some leaching on the top and the bottom of, of the uh, prisms. And by leaching, you are reducing the alkali content and that is not good as a performance test. So as a consequence, uh, now as the AR3 prisons had a, had a width of only 75 millimeters, we are now increasing the prisms up to 100 millimeters. And by that, we think we are reducing the leaching and obtaining a more a realistic expansion. So that is the new thing with the Rylem 10 method. In the second work package, uh, led by Professor Benoit Fournier from the University of Laval in Quebec, Canada, uh, we look into the results from the laboratory, uh, from the accelerated uh, performance test, and what is happening in real uh, structures or real exposure sites. Uh, we did uh, establish uh, some new cubes in, back in 2015 uh, in this uh, TC. Uh, so the, uh, some cubes were cast in, in Portugal, Portugal and they were distributed around the world to different exposure sites and now we are starting to collect and gain information on the environmental effects of different um, exposure sites in a warm climate, humid climate, colder climate and so on. So this will be an ongoing activity, but we already have invested a lot in this, uh, these cubes and it will give some very good results in the near future. We also had some old blocks uh, study uh, because we had a European project back in 2005 and we were able then now to take cores from those uh, blocks that have been uh, exposed uh, at different uh, exposure sites and we are doing a very thorough um, examination of that uh, blocks uh, to see how they behave in the different environmental uh, and so on. And additionally, um, in this work package has been carried out a very thorough star report looking on the lab field correlation. Because it's, it's important when you are testing in the laboratory um, with accelerated conditions uh, and you got, in, got some expansion results uh, after months or year, but relatively short time, comparing to what's happening in real life uh, in exposure sites. Do we uh, compare apple and pears or how is it? That is a very crucial and important question. We see now that in the laboratory, if you are accelerating the conditions and you have a higher temperature, you, you know that if you're taking an egg and putting it into 100 degrees boiling water, you will, will got to boil the egg after six to um, eight minutes. If you take the same egg and putting it at 38 degrees, well, then you get the chicken after 28 days. So the outcome in real life compared to, to the laboratory is quite different if you have accelerated conditions. So we have to take care and look at the effects of temperature. And th those are things we are, we are looking into. Then in the third work package, led by Dr. Esperanza Menendez Mendes from CSIC in Spain, um, we are looking into the assessment of detailed alkali inventory in concrete, including internal aggregate release from uh, the aggregate itself, 
recycling of aggregates and external supply of, 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 of alkalis. Um, it has been discussed for a while that it is a potential that the aggregates themselves are releasing alkalis in the uh, environmental of the concrete. So it was developed a new test method, the Rylem AR8 method. We made two round robin tests and we have now this Rylem AR8 method measuring the potential maximum releasable alkalis from, from aggregates in, in, the, in the laboratory. So that is a very interesting method, but it's very important to, real, to, to tell that this is an accelerated method in the laboratory and we do need to verify the results coming out from this method and the number itself. In addition, uh, in this work package is what made a um, star report on the alkali inventory. Alkali inventory in concrete is very complicated. When you're testing uh, concrete, concrete prisms like this, uh, well, you, you have the, you, you are rise, uh, increasing the temperature. Uh, you want the humidity to go into the concrete prism for the reaction to occur and so on. That's important. But do we, we do know that there will be some leaching of alkalis out from the prisms. Is that the challenge? So that in order to compensate for that, we sometimes are boosting. That means we are adding alkalis to the system. Um, but um, also, uh, we, there are some speculations that there could be some recycling of alkalis when they're going into the gel and they're going out of the gel again and starting to react. So, so that's a complicated question as well. And we also know that there will be some concentration of alkalis in the top of the prisms and, and, and so on. And then um, there have been quite some discussions if all of all the alkalis in the system are available or are some amount bound in the system and not participating in the react reaction. That's, that's an uncertainty. And then it's this uncertainty if the alkalis, or if the aggregates themselves are releasing alkalis into the system. So having a good overview of the alkali inventory is very complicated. So this is the challenge that was looked into in this work. But as I said, we are measuring now the uh, potential alkalis released by the aggregates in, ag in an accelerated test. But it is very important to verify uh, this potential alkali release with what is happening in real, uh, real concrete or in performance testing in laboratories to start with. And we also need to validate a test method for alkalis released by the aggregates. So this uh, work package was actually started in the middle of the um, uh, TC um, after uh, two years or something. And it has been led by Professor Klaus West from Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And we have not kind of uh, finalized this work. So this, this work definitely needs to be, to, to be uh, continued to, in this verification, which is very important. So um, in this uh, five years period, it has been a very uh, ex um, exciting time to, to meet all these people and work with all these people. Uh, we have had uh, 12 physical meetis, meetings during this period. Uh, fortunately, we have been able to travel uh, these five years. So we have met at 12 different so we started with the first meeting in Oslo in October 2014. We had the second week, second meeting in, in spring 2015 in London. We had a field trip and a workshop and the third meeting in Ottawa and Toronto in September 2015. And the fourth meeting in Paris in March 2016. Then in uh, cooperation with the International Conference on Alkali Aggregate Reaction, Reactions, ICAR, we had our fifth meeting in Sao Paulo in Brazil in 2016. And the Rylan week in uh, Lyngby, Copenhagen in Denmark in August 2016. We also used the opportunity to meet to have the, have the TC meeting there. Uh, the seventh meeting we had in May in Stockholm 2017 and the eighth meeting in Vienna in November 2017. 
We had a ninth meeting in 2018 in Reykjavik, Iceland, and a tenth meeting in, at EMPA in Dubendorf, Switzerland in 2018. Finally, um, we had the eleventh meeting in association with the Ryland Week in Rovin in Croatia in uh, March 2019. We had a kind of, uh, not a full TC meeting, but a working meeting at Lenac Lisbon in October 2019. And then finally, the 12th and final meeting was in Delft in the Netherlands in December last year in 2019. Um, there have been many, many participants in this TC. Uh, we have had many guests participating, of course, and, and other people contributing. Uh, but we ended up with this list of 48 uh, people, uh, which is the official list of members of, uh, of this TC. Um, and um, as you can see, uh, we have great many people from Canada, um, but also from um, US and of course a lot from Europe, but also Asia. Uh, and so on. So it, it's been a very and and this is uh, to my to my opinion a very good um, group and it's been, it's the leading uh, leading scientist uh, on a global scale. So what we have delivered? Well, um, I have been presenting these recommendations. Uh, so we have this Rylem AL note, which is the outline guide to use the Rylem methods. Uh, we have made an updated version of that um, uh, document. And then we have the test methods. We have the RILEM AAR8, which is the, the determination of potential releasable alkalis. We have this new concrete uh, prism test, AAR10, with a, a larger prism size. We, ha we have AAR11 and AAR12. Uh, uh, concrete prisms uh, exposed at uh, 60 degrees. And then finally, we have this AR13 based on a Japanese uh, procedure where the prisms are wrapped in an alkali solution. And all those recommendations were submitted to materials and structures in June this summer. We also had some old blocks uh, study uh, because we had a Euro I'm very glad that uh, this work will continue, uh, and I, but it's a challenge that we should not have too much overlap between these two different TCs. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, the development in, in this field. And just at the end, it's just important to remember that success is failure turned inside out the silver tint of the cloud of doubt. And you never can tell how closely you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your hardest hit is when things seem worse that you must not quit. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, nice overview of the work and the philosophical ending make, gives us some food for thought. I'm very sorry, but near the end, I seem to have uh, messed up with the controls. I was looking at the question and answers and then seem to have hit um, also the, the play button of the presentation. So I hope, Borge, I didn't uh, skip a big part of your talk. I tried to put it back at the right place. If you think we missed something important, please uh, tell me. <laughs> And, and that, um, that that's fine, Birke here. Uh, I think you just um, it was one slide about the new two technical committees that I presented, uh, but I I think that that's fine. And you informed us this morning that uh, the two new TCs have uh, has has been approved. Is that correct? Yes, they have been approved to to start. Yeah, with some um, suggestions to revise a little bit before we put it on the website but um, yeah there were yeah. no major comments so they are they can start with some small revisions and and suggestions from TAC.
Yeah, and also I think that the one slide that was skipped was that I actually uh, thanked all the participants in this TC because it's been a very good uh, cooperation and uh, it is important to realize that this is uh, voluntarily work. So I very much appreciate all the work that people have been doing during these uh, five to six years of this TC. Okay, thanks. Um, well, I have seen in the meantime in the question and answers that there was uh, a few questions. Um, I'm sure you can access them as well because it's a rather long one, but there is a, a question from uh, Fung, Fung, uh, well, Fung Kwok Tri who says it's an interesting talk. Do you think the accelerated ASR test using one molar sodium hydroxide at 80 degrees so that would be the Oberholster test, I assume. Uh, it's still uh, relevant for concrete with SEMs, which typically exhibit a slow hydration rate. And if the expansion is larger than the limit, but no cracks observed, would you then still consider the materials have a potential risk to ASR? So a double question, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the short, the short answer is that I do not at all recommend the accelerator motorbike test as a performance test. So I do not recommend it to to check uh, the effect of SEMs and so on. So that's why actually we developed this new AR10 uh, method, which is a concrete prism test, and it's it's a real real performance test. So use the accelerator multiple test just for check the reactivity of your aggregates, nothing else. Uh, the second question regarding the expansion limits, I think you have to, in each country with different reactive aggregates, you have to get your local experience, what is the critical limit, uh, and that, that should be compared what you see in real structures. Uh, and also, once again, you should continue your testing in uh, concrete prism test testing because the accelerate motorbike test is just an, a screening test. Yeah. Okay, I, that was a, a clear answer, I think. Um, also, another question from an anonymous attendee. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. Could you suggest a method to assess the alkali reactivity of the cement or binder? Would it then be the same prism test or? Yeah, 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 it's the same answer. I mean, if you, if you want to do the performance of your concrete uh, mix um, as, a, as a search, you need to go for a real performance test. And then we are uh, proposing this AR10 method that hopefully will be published uh, during the next uh, months. Okay, thanks a lot. I see no more questions and we are, well, still a little bit over time, but we didn't lose uh, more time. So that's a good sign. So thanks a lot for uh, being with us and also uh, being present for answering the questions, uh, Borge. Yep, you're welcome. Okay. We, will, we can then go to...